Hello, my name is Bryce Campbell. Today, I am going to be reviewing a sword. I'm also going to be giving you guys Japanese terminology about the parts of each of a sword. As well as future videos coming like what to do when you need to sharpen, clean them, and polish them. This is my first video on my channel um, besides my trailer and I'm hoping to give new buyers info for decent swords that you know you can get within 150 bucks to 200 um, because I, I'll be honest I'm not the wealthiest guy in the world and most of my swords are under two hundred dollars and all of them are very nice um, but let's get started uh, today I have 10 Ryu Musashi 1045 high carbon steel um, sword it is um, uh, selling on Bud K for sixty nine ninety nine. It is retailed at $189.99. Um, it does have authentic same or ray skin um, in between the wrapping, which the wrapping here is a cotton Aiko. Uh, it has brass muneki and two bamboo muneki pegs. Um, you know, they go all the way through. This blade is a full tang, comes all the way back to here. Um, a lot of people will say it's not full tang but it is if it would only be a three-quarter tang if it had like stopped about here or even here um and then this peg would actually be moved forward but if it goes almost all the way through it is full tang um with japanese swords a full tang blade does not go all the way through due to its mounting system the wrapping and the kashira it has a mate mate black um finish with little black lacquer speckles on it. Uh, it's just a hardwood saya. Um, it has a cotton cotton segeo uh, wrapped around it. Um, the segeo was used as handcuffs by the Japanese as well as uh, tatsuki. Uh, tatsuki is where you tie your sleeves back when you're fighting. Um, let me take it out of here. Um, when you take a blade out, you want to go slow, especially if you're doing demonstrations and stuff um, or showing your friends. You don't want to draw it like you're going to cut them down because that's a sign of disrespect and a threat in Japanese culture. Um, but here you have the 1045 it's high really good steel for $69.99. Um, I, I was really worried about it being clay tempered. I'm not sure if you can actually see the hammond on it. Uh, the hammond on it, it's a bit not as deep as it would I would like it to be, but it's still very good. Um, it has a nice 10, 10 level polish or 12. I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me. Um, it does have a long bow high. The bow high wasn't actually used um, as a blood filler. It was used to lighten the sword. Um, back during the Edo period and you know a lot of those warring areas, their swords actually didn't have a bow high. They were uh, just forged a solid piece. Um, most of the swords took almost a year to make. Um, and so the bow high didn't really come until later periods when war wasn't a commonplace. It was more added later as design and you know a way to make it just for show. Um, but this blade like I said, it has a 55 HRC cutting edge and maybe a, maybe a 40, 45 HRC back. Um, you have the cutting edge or the ha, which you know is very nice. Um, it is sharp. And then you have up here, it has a medium kisaki. The kisaki is the tip of the blade. And um, there, there's different links you have. Up here we have the kisaki. This is a medium kasaki. Uh, you have different lengths, lengths in kasakis. You have a short kasaki, which is meant for uh, really quick cuts. You have a um, a long kasaki, which is an O kasaki. It is actually meant more of a weapon to be used off horseback, due to its the blade itself up here would be a lot narrower, and this tip would actually come out to about here. Being being for the fact that you're on horseback and you want you're probably only gonna hit a guy off horseback with about You know that much of your blade and you want the most damage you can do um, Granted this blade, you know, I wasn't too fond about the medium 
Kasaki. Uh, I do like it though. It is, you know, it was also clay tempered all the way through, which is a good sign. It means it's going to be a really residual edge in our hop. Um, as I'm, as I went over this when I first got it, you know, it took me a while to really start looking into my details and, you know, making sure what it, they posted on Bud K was correct. Um, one thing I did like though is that they they, they did say the habaki, which is your collar here. Your habaki here will um, is what holds your the rest of your handle, your suka and your suba on in place. Really, pretty much, you put the habaki will keep this where it's at, so it's not sliding up and down the sword. Um, but you have the brass habaki. You also have uh, two brass seppa. Uh, you got one here, which is the spacer in between the habaki and the suba, and you know, over time your handle might get loose. Well, you can always add more seppa. You also have another seppa back here, right along the fuchi. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just a spacer to help tighten up the sword. Um, but you get you normally you only ever need two. But if it starts to get loose, you can always buy more or make more to put in there to tighten up your guard again. Uh, the suba. This suba here, especially, I'm gonna try to get a decent straight-on shot of it. Um, this is a, I think it's stainless steel or um, or iron. I'm not positive. I think it might be iron uh, guard. But this is um, Musashi style guard. A lot of swords that have Musashi in them will have this guard, uh, even including the Wakazashi's and stuff like that. Um, one thing on these, with this blade though I liked about it, is it's, it's not heavy. It's, it's really light for its material um, and everything that went into it. Is, you know, a lot of the swords you'll buy nowadays, a lot of them like from Shinwa and stuff, they're signed on the blade. Like up here, like right in here. They're signed or stamped with chemical etching. Um, but, you know, you really don't get to find out who made your sword. You don't really get to know if it was someone that knew a lot about making them or if it was just a guy in a factory somewhere making them. Um, good thing about this is I can take this apart, which I will do shortly, and um, you'll actually get a safe As safe. you can see, I have taken everything off here. Um, right down here, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but if I, try, let me try to get it in some decent light where it might show up you can see that it is actually signed on the tang. Um, in Edo area, you'd have your smith signature, your polisher signature, and the guy it was made for, and then usually on the other side, you would have um, how many body parts it went through during its test cuts, because back then they used prisoners to test their swords. Um, granted, if you ever found a sword from like World War II era, that had all of those on there, you are looking at a lot of money. Um, most of the time when you do find a World War II sword, you'll have um, usually uh, the person it was made for's name and what body part it was tested on, but this, most of the time uh, you'll find the sword where the smith's name was cut off due to military regulations. Um, but you know, there's still some swords out there where you can still find everything you need um, to actually find out who made it, who it was made for, um, what what body part or what it was tested on, um, you know, when they tested them on the prisoners, it would depended on the prisoners, um, you know, crime. You know, sometimes they could lose a hand or an arm, or the serious enough crime they lost a head, and you know. But when you really think about it, they tested them thoroughly. Um, this I have. I have done a test cut with it. Um, I took about two inches of rolled up newspaper, da uh, lightly dampened, with um, about half an inch bamboo rod in the center, and cut it, cut clean through it in one stroke. So these, this sword is a really good sword for its money. Um, maybe later down the road in my next video, or maybe. Um, couple videos from here I will show a polishing and maintenance 
video or maybe I might even just show another sword I will try to post something every two weeks um, like I said I'm just starting out so it might not be every two weeks it might be every three it depends on what you know happens from here on out if you get anything thinner than thinner than this if you get anything thinner than this please please I repeat do not buy it it is a wall hanger all you can do with it is hang it on your wall and show it off and it's not going to be practical for anything thank you my name is Bryce Campbell and I am out